We're now four episodes deep into our series on Total War Three Kingdoms, and I think it's about time we talked about the troops themselves. Your armies are the lifeblood of any Total War campaign, and a lot about how you organise your different units into an effective fighting force has changed this time around. From the way in which new troops are recruited, to the formations they take upon the battlefield, and the direct link that they have with the generals who lead them. Three Kingdoms has its own distinct take on how units should function in a Total War game. Let's start with the recruitment pool. If you've played Total War Thrones of Britannia, you may already be familiar with the idea of mustering, and Three Kingdoms has something similar in place here. The idea being that you can recruit very quickly, anywhere on the map, but it may take some time for those units to actually reach full strength. Uh, well, you now recruit um, units, you sort of must them immediately. Uh, they, they turn up at uh, minimal strength, then over a course of a couple of turns they then build up to, um, to full capacity. So you can always field a moderately, you know, a useful army. It might not be the most powerful army, but you can sort of muster troops relatively quickly. Um, forces are now also divided into retinues. So an army can have three characters, uh, three generals, and each one of these generals can carry up to six uh, units. Um, and when you retire a character, they take their retinue with them. Uh, so you, it allows you to sort of uh, undeploy and then redeploy uh, across the map in uh, a relatively uh, fast and effective manner. Um, and sort of places the whole flexibility of the military force uh, in a way that it, we've never had before in the campaign map. It's really rather exciting. So mustering in Three Kingdoms is meant to feel, at least to begin with, quite freeform. Each of your generals will be able to recruit from any of the basic unit types – spearmen, swordsmen, archers, and so on. However, some of the higher tier units will only be available to those generals that specialise in a certain area. Perhaps they're famous for their use of mobility, and can recruit better cavalry units as a result. And then on top of that, you have the game's elite units. There are two types of elite units. Um, of course, we have the Emperor Guards, basically the Palace Guard of Emperors. Uh, this is a set of units that you unlock once you reach the status of being Emperor. Uh, these are really you know, buffy melee units and buffy archers, uh, versatile in um, melee and ranged. And they're, they're really sort of the high-end um, high units. But we also have we call the hybrid units. They're basically a combination of two elements, and they are usually the sort of um, the highest unit a character can unlock with a high rank, and they are really nice at um, sort of filling in that specialist role between the elements. So, for example, we have a very heavy cavalry unit, which is the hybrid between fire, so shock cavalry, and wood uh, line infantry. They're still cavalry, but they are so um, resilient and so heavily armored that they can hold the line uh, almost like on their horses and really be defensive. Old school fans of Total War will be pleased to hear that yes, unit formations will be playing a big part in Three Kingdoms once again. Although you'll need the right kind of general in your army if you want to take full advantage of the mechanic. Since uh, Warhammer, we've reintroduced the notion of classic unit formations. Um, and they work much as they did before. So you select a unit, and then you can sort of activate the formation, almost like an, an ability. Um, now, they are only available if you have a strategist character, uh, so a water general in your, in your army. That's where they specialize. So they're not duelists, like I said before. Um, they're really into uh, supporting the troop uh, tactics and, and that sort of level of combat. So with that, you rank up your strategist characters and they unlock a number of uh, formations. Well, like some which we've seen before, sort of square formation, pipe wall, that kind of thing. Um, we do have a couple of new ones. So we have a circle uh, formation and we have an improved sort of testudo turtle formation, uh, which involves the unit being entirely uh, sort of shielded from all sides, um, which makes them pretty damn powerful and nigh impenetrable, uh, sort of a higher tier. Um, formation that you'll unlock by ranking up your character to a much higher level. The end result of all of this is that your army's composition is now very closely linked to the generals leading them. As well as being powerful fighters in their own right, you also need to look to their specialisations to help flesh out your fighting force. Simply putting your three strongest generals together in a single army might not be the best option. If other generals could provide a more diverse range of higher level units. And then there's the matter of your strategist. As a unit on the front lines, 
They're one of the weakest classes of heroes you can likely field, but it's what else they bring to the table that's important. Building and managing an army in Three Kingdoms is, in a number of ways, unlike any other Total War game before now. But how does that translate to the battlefield, you might be asking? Well, for our fifth and final video in this series, we'll be examining a single battle with the help from Creative Assembly and breaking down how everything works as it happens. Join us then as we check out some of the different abilities at your general's disposal, and most excitingly, what happens when two characters decide to duel. Everyone loves a jewel.